understands hazard communication lessons. There's an oil spill under machine number five, and I need you to clean it up with the new floor cleaner. Now, listen carefully. We're using Fast Clean Green Floor Cleaner now, because the old Fast Clean stuff is toxic. Jason, are you listening? Yeah, Fast Clean Floor Cleaner. No, it's Fast Clean Green. Yeah, yeah, okay, be right there. Listen, Jason, I've got to take care of something real quick. Wait until I get back to get started, okay? For implementing and maintaining a hazard communication program, select each object to learn more about the elements of your company's hazard communication program. Your company's written hazard communication program must include standard operating procedures for the use of chemicals in your workplace, a chemical inventory, safety data sheets, and labeling information, guidelines for chemical storage, transportation, and disposal, precautions and emergency response procedures, and training resources and requirements. Your employer must provide safety data sheets, or SDSs, for all hazardous chemicals in your workplace and ensure all SDSs are maintained and readily accessible to you and your coworkers. All chemical containers in your workplace must feature labels and markings that include the product name and manufacturer, signal words, hazards, precautionary statements, and hazard pictograms. These labels and markings must follow the guidelines described in the Globally Harmonized System of Classification and Labeling of Chemicals, or GHS. Your company's hazard communication training should include an inventory of the hazardous chemicals found in your workplace and the potential hazards presented by these chemicals, the standard operating procedures for handling chemicals in your workplace, instructions for reading chemical labels, visual pictograms, and safety data sheets, storage, disposal, and transportation considerations, and workplace precautions and emergency response procedures. Most chemicals have some specific hazard potential to either your health, your surroundings, or both. Select each image to learn about the physical and health hazards you may encounter when working with hazardous chemicals. After reviewing the content, select the X to return to and learn about the remaining images. A physical hazard is one that results in a physical event, such as a fire or explosion. Physical hazard categories include explosive, flammable, oxidizer, self-reactive, pyrophoric, self-heating, organic peroxide, corrosive to metal, gas under pressure, and chemicals that emit flammable gas when they come in contact with water. Health hazards exist when exposure to a chemical presents a danger to your health and reproductive capability. Identifying health hazards can be challenging because you may be exposed without realizing it. Effects can be difficult to identify. Symptoms can vary from person to person, and health effects may be immediate or may take years to appear. GHS compliant chemical labels are written, printed, or graphic information for a hazardous chemical that are affixed to, printed on, or attached to a hazardous chemical container or to the outside packaging. Select each object to learn more about the chemical labels and warnings. The manufacturer or distributor affixes labels to product containers displaying the chemical name, potential hazards, precautions, supplier information, and written and graphic hazard warnings. Your employer may have secondary chemical containers such as spray bottles or cans which contain chemicals transferred from a larger container. These secondary containers must be labeled with in-house labels or markings, sometimes referred to as secondary labels, and communicate how you can find additional information about the chemical. The Department of Transportation, or DOT, mandates that chemical manufacturers, importers, or distributors must display hazardous material labels, placards, or markings that comply with GHS and DOT hazard communication requirements when transporting or shipping hazardous materials to ensure proper and safe transportation of such cargo. and understand the hazards of the chemicals you handle. These pictograms represent physical hazards and health hazards, or a combination of both. 
When you see one of these pictograms, stop and read the chemical label and SDS for more information. Select each pictogram to learn about the hazard classes it represents. The health hazard pictogram identifies materials that present the potential for longer term health hazards. This pictogram represents materials classified as carcinogens, respiratory sensitizers, and those with the potential for reproductive, target organ and aspiration toxicity, as well as mutagenicity, meaning they can cause changes to genes as a result of exposure. Materials bearing this pictogram include formaldehyde, chlorine, trichloroethylene, and toluene. The exploding bomb pictogram identifies materials that may explode. This pictogram represents materials classified as explosive, self-reactive, and organic peroxides. Materials bearing the exploding bomb pictogram include butyl hydroperoxide and acrylic acid. The exclamation mark pictogram identifies materials that require caution during handling and use. This pictogram represents materials classified as irritants to the skin and eyes, skin sensitizers, those that are acutely toxic or have narcotic effects. They may also cause respiratory tract irritation and damage to the ozone layer. Materials bearing the exclamation mark pictogram include nitric oxide, hydrogen sulfide, and osmium tetroxide. The corrosion pictogram identifies chemicals that can cause the health effects of skin corrosion, burns, and eye damage, and can be damaging or corrosive to metals. Materials bearing the corrosion pictogram include sulfuric acid, nitric acid, and hydrochloric acid. The flame pictogram identifies materials that present a fire hazard. This pictogram represents materials classified as flammable, pyrophoric, self-heating, emitting flammable gas, self-reactive, and organic peroxides. Materials bearing the flame pictogram include acetone, butyl acetate, and chlorine trichloride. The skull and crossbones pictogram indicates materials that are acutely toxic, meaning that a single exposure to them, whether via ingestion, inhalation, or absorption, could be toxic or fatal. Materials bearing the acute toxicity pictogram include acrylonitrile, arsenic, pentafluoride gas, and dimethyl sulfate. The environmental hazard pictogram indicates chemicals that are hazardous to the aquatic environment, are acutely and chronically toxic to the aquatic environment, possess bioaccumulation potential, and possess rapid degradability. Materials bearing this pictogram include formaldehyde, chlorine, copper oxide, and sulfur dioxide. The flame over circle pictogram identifies materials known as oxidizers. Substances and mixtures of this hazard class are represented by a single hazard category because by providing oxygen, they cause or contribute to the combustion of other materials more than air does. Materials bearing the flame over circle pictogram include oxygen, hydrogen peroxide, and potassium nitrate. The gas cylinder pictogram identifies gases under pressure and indicates that the sudden release of pressure Heating or freezing may lead to serious damage to people, property, or the environment, independent of other hazards the gases may pose. Gas cylinders bearing the gas cylinder pictogram may contain gases such as neon, nitrogen, and hydrogen. Stan said fast clean. I think this is the one. No, he said fast clean green. The one he chose is toxic. He should wait for Stan. Mix with water and we're ready to go. He needs to stop and read the manufacturer's label and the safety data sheet. Hazardous chemical in your workplace is its safety data sheet, or SDS, a technical bulletin containing the chemical's physical and health hazards. Chemical manufacturers and distributors are required to furnish current SDSs to your company for hazardous products. You should always read the SDS before working with any new chemical, and your company must make SDS information easily available to you in a central location or maintain electronic SDSs and provide access through computers or other means. Ask your manager or supervisor where the SDSs for your area are located. Each safety data sheet contains 16 sections grouped by the information they contain. Select each group to learn more about the information contained in an SDS. Section 1 identifies the substance or mixture, 
provides its other names and uses and supplier details. Section 2 describes each of the chemical's hazards, including their hazard categories. Section 3 contains information on the chemical's ingredients. Section 4 describes the initial care that an untrained person can provide following an exposure without sophisticated equipment or a wide selection of medical supplies. Section 5 explains how to... Section 7 identifies the best practices to minimize the potential harm to people, property, and the environment when storing and handling the chemical or mixture. Section 8 describes appropriate engineering controls such as ventilation guidelines and instructs on minimizing hazards associated with exposure to the substance or mixture. Section 9 identifies the physical and chemical properties of the substance. Section 10 identifies whether the material is stable or unstable under normal work conditions and its compatibility with other materials. Section 11 describes the various health effects of the chemical and advises how to identify those effects. Section 12 provides important information in case of a spill that could affect the environment. Section 13 describes waste residues and provides information on their safe handling and methods of disposal. Section 14 provides details about transporting the hazardous substance by road, rail, sea, or air. Section 15 describes the safety, health, and environmental regulations specific to the hazardous chemical. And Section 16 describes other considerations, including information on preparation and revision of the SDS.